All right. Thank you, good, fellas. All right, peace and black power, everybody. I want to welcome you to another NCRBG Deep production. Um, tonight we got a nice show lined up for the family. And, you know, tonight we're going to basically be talking about financial literacy in the black community. Again, um, you can find us on YouTube. Um, the name of the show is NCRBG Deep Production. You can look for us on YouTube. You can like the page, you can thumb up the video, you can give us some comments, and you can let us know what you actually think about what we got going on. Um, you know, and again, I just want to thank y'all. If you live on Facebook watching us, you know, leave a comment. Um, you know, this is the first time we going live on Facebook, so it might be mistakes made, but you know, it's a learning process, you know what I'm saying? But with everything, you know, you get better with it with time. And with that being said, I'm gonna give my panel members the opportunity to introduce themselves to the family. You know, y'all can unmute your mic and go one at a time. Peace. This is Master You. I look forward to a, a great conversation and, you know, good deal on our financial literacy. Yeah, peace, peace, family. So it's uh, in the back, Cafe for Yeah, I'm on Ray out of Philadelphia. Just glad to be a part of the panel. And this is definitely a much needed topic. So I'm um, you know, glad to do my part. And with that said, you know what I'm saying? I want to thank the brothers for joining. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we want to talk about financial literacy. Because in the black community, it seems like when it comes to finances, it's, it's something that, you know, we're not that literate about. You know, we are not taught this. And, you know, for a lot of us, we don't know about generational wealth. So we don't have things that's passed down that have been taught from generation to generation. So for a lot of us, we're the first generation or the second generation that's actually trying to break this barrier. We're trying to tear down these walls of being truly illiterate. And we are trying to now understand finances and make our finances work for us instead of us working for the money. We're trying to now to get it so we you know get our money to work for us. And you know, with what's going on in the world today with the economy and how you know everything is going on with the COVID 19 and us staying at home, a lot of people are under there will be a good day for us to come up here and talk about some financial literacy. So with that being said, I'm gonna allow Master You to jump right in. You know, and just, you know, break down financial literacy to us, brother. All right, thank you, brother. Um, Stuart, brother Set Haru, I appreciate that. Um, so again, you know, I, I'm, I'm by no means a financial expert, but what I am is, is I'm a reader. And um, I know where I was financially and I know where I'm at now. Um, and I've learned that wealth is a, is a mind state. You're not necessarily, you know, a, a dollar amount, which a lot of people get confused. But if you have your mentality right, then you can definitely increase your, your, uh, your dollar state. And just to piggyback on what um, Brother Seth was uh, helping your finances in order is, is very, very critical. Um, I can't remember how many people who are without jobs now. I know it's in the tens of millions of people. And um, quite a few of those people, you know, of, of all colors, but people. And so um, I know when, when I was in school, we were taught math and reading, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, history. But no one actually set us down and taught us about, you know, how to open a checking account, you know, um, saving, and then how to choose a proper savings account. Whole thing like how's your credit score actually you know tallied up? Um, how to how do you for a home? Like no one taught me any of these things. And my mother you know grow herself in a financial way, but um, I was kind of learning as she as she was learning. So she gave me some game um, you know in life. But a lot of this stuff I learned from my basic points. And with each point, um, I'm going to allow you know um, everybody that's that's on this live on this panel. Um, Brother Seth Haru and Brother Nabot to kind of chime in on these points to kind of also give their thoughts. Um, but first, I'll talk about it, then I'll open it up. But the first thing in terms of financial, for me, that was like very, very hard. You know, I didn't have the best credit score. I wasn't, you know, managing um, my money the best. So no, no matter how much I made, I spent whatever it was that I had. And so, you know, a lot of times we are consumed by the things that we see. So, you know, um, I never owned a pair of Jordans, but, you know, I liked other stuff. So I would put my money towards other things that did not have a value for me. It wasn't, a, it wasn't necessarily an asset. I found my money kind of pretty much bleeding through a hole. And when it comes time to examine yourself where you are financially, it can be, pretty, can be pretty rough. You may find out that your accounts are not where they should be. You may find out like, you know, man, you know, I thought I had enough money to, to ask in your car. You may look and go check your account. It's like, man, how did I go from, I thought I had $100 in my account or $200 and I don't really have but $20. I just got some gas and my account is finna be red. And I have an overdraft fee. Um, and again, like facing your credit score. So I think what I know, at least for myself and then talking to a lot of other people, when it comes to examining where you are financially, it is something that scares people. It pushes people. Um, but the longer we take to face where we are, then it pushes the problem deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper down a rabbit hole to a point where it may never get fixed. And for someone like me, who is a father, um, you know, I, 
who is uh, wealthy in terms of uh, finances. There's, there's no one that I know. And so um, examining myself and then, you know, making certain sacrifices and things of that nature, there's a, a lot of blows and stuff that I take on the chin because there's things I just didn't know. And I'm just, I'm learning a, as I go. So if there's any advice that I could definitely give to anyone is definitely take the time to sit down and just review all your finances. Review, look at what your account, which we'll talk about, you know, in a few minutes. Just examine yourself and see where you are. And um, one of the biggest ways to examine where you are financially is just simply to create a budget. And, you know, I know that sounds very, very simple and people have heard this probably millions and millions and millions and millions of, of times before, but sit down and uh, just create a budget. Um, and I think the simplest way, I mean, there's different programs that, that you could use. I think, you know, Quicken has a, like a budgeting tool. Mint.com has a budgeting tool. YNAB has a budgeting tool. Out of all those programs, I don't use any of them, but you can. I just simply use an Excel spreadsheet. That's all I do. Um, Excel has an, uh, has a spreadsheet. And you can go in there and plug in every single bill and you can see how much money you're going to have left over a month, whether you're going to be in the red or um, if everything balances out or if you're going to have a surplus. So the biggest thing when it comes to examining where you are financially, take the time to sit down and create yourself a budget and, you know, figure out, you know, how much money do you spend on gas? How much money do you spend on groceries? Um, how much money really is your light bill? Because most people have no idea, like, how much is your cable bill you pay every month? You don't know. How much money is that you spend on gas every month? You don't know. And such your account. And it has no, it's, it's going somewhere, but it's not necessarily benefiting you. So sit down and create a budget. And a good thing about creating a budget, and again, I'm going to talk about myself. I'm someone who loves water. So I find myself constantly going to the store and I'm buying like, you know, these gallons of water, um, all the gallons of water. And the other thing of water, I just got so much water. And probably, you know, every week I'm probably sitting down and you look at that. I was like, man, I'm spending all this money on water a month. And you never think about it. Why? Because you never took the time to see where all your money is going. And if I, and so if I just sit here and examine and say, okay, cool, I'm, if I'm spending $15 every time I go to the grocery store, you know, once on water, if I look at that over the span of four weeks in a month, that's $60 that I'm spending every month towards water. And if I look at over the span of a year, I'm spending what, uh, like $700, $720 a month in water. You're spending $720 a month in water. And that money could be used somewhere else. And you would say, well, master, you know, uh, master, you, the, the water that's in my faucet is not clean. Cool. But I've read a filter. A simple one, that filter, you know, runs out and that saves you all that money. And you can take the rest of that money and put it towards steps, would it be you know, to pay off a credit card and put it towards emergency savings, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just a small benefit of like, you know, examining where you financially and creating a budget. And that's something that I have done in my life. And I've definitely seen the benefits. I've seen where, you know, I can kind of cut off some expenses. I've saw that, you know, um, I'm spending too much money in groceries. I'm spending too much money just riding out, spending too much money in gas or spending too much money in clothes or whatever it is, that money um, to help me build, you know, like a, a savings account to take that money and put it towards, you know, like, you know, having a Roth IRA or, you know, having a Robinhood account and investing that money that would give you a bigger return in an actual savings account, which is a whole other conversation. So, um, yeah, creating a budget is something that's very, very important. If you would, you know, kind of add on to the point of creating a budget or examining where you are financially. Either one of y'all can jump in. <laughs> Well, well, um, I think I think you touched on it perfectly, brother. Um, I think that uh, that that's the main thing that uh, that you that you said that's real uh, important is that we really focused on uh, our expenses. Like you said, a lot of times that you know we go out and we're constantly spending on certain things that we could consolidate and save money on. Me personally, I just recently purchased a a Brita filter. Um, I can attest to that myself. I would I would go out and um by like you know, and eventually like you said I, I started looking at it like i'm buying cases and cases and cases of water and this is adding up you know to money where i can you know consolidate and just grab one of these brita filters and that's exactly what i did so you know um and i was able to save money um over the past few uh weeks that i wouldn't have saved if i didn't purchase that but like you said it's um it's, it's focusing it's t you know it's just taking the time to sit down and focus on the, ex the things that we're spending our money on and finding ways and solutions of you know of um you know like like i i think you you know you pretty much touched on it uh you know right on point and yes you know um, i just want to second it because the brother he he hit it head on and you know he talked about a lot of things that a lot of people don't we haven't been taught to have a reserve fund where we can have enough money set aside so if something were to happen that we're able to pay our bills for six months you know um a lot of us as african-americans we always do excess spending you know we are the 
the the spenders of this society, American American. So all we do is spend, spend, spend. So you know we we make the new trends, we set the new trends, we make clothes hot. You get what I'm saying? Because we constantly buy things, and so we are we are inherited to spend. Now, um, I do want to say this. Um, I see we have two new people that have joined the um show. Um, Miss Mona, um, I want to give y'all opportunity to introduce yourself and um, you know, let y'all know that we're talking about financial literacy. Um, one thing that you know, Master Yu, the guy I was talking about. You know, it's like, and something we need to talk about is credit and understanding the benefits of credit and the disadvantages of credit. Because you know, in the hood, a lot of times you grow up in the hood, by the time you 18, 20, your credit already messed up because usually your parents will get stuff in your name before you're of age. I don't know if y'all have been through it, but I went through it. You know, this is the era that I'm from, wherein you, by the time you're 21, you already got bad credit. And you haven't really even done anything until you start off with a disadvantage because we don't understand the importance of credit. And, you know, so I want to give some other people the opportunity um, to jump in and, um, you know, make some comments. So before I, um, because I'll be going on tangents. I'm not trying to do that. Greetings. I just want to at least speak to everyone. Um, this is Mona Epps. Gilliam, I go by Mona Epps on Facebook, and um, just glad to hear the conversation, glad I can be the number. I would like to add, I did chime in a little late, um, because I'm still multitasking, but I would like to say, um, what Master, you know, to kind of, uh, to piggyback on what Master, you said about um, downsides, and I think it all, for me, came together, because I had already started looking at ways to cut costs before COVID, because um, I've had a career change. I'm working for myself versus being in the educational system over 20 years. So it kind of really, I just was already propelling. But one of the things I did, I had to, what I ended up doing is doing some volunteer volunteer work for the food bank. So you know that, uh, and if you don't know, my daughter and I went to do some volunteer work, but most of the people volunteering were white. We were probably the very few blacks, some, some students, some, a few black students maybe, and the majority of the volunteers were white. They always knew what was coming in. This particular food bank, is like a hub. It ships out to all the churches in the community, white, black, or whatever. So they will always know what was coming in. One of the things I tapped into was a list, and I had never done it. It was a, a whole sheet of um, who was providing foods. I mean, things that I know I would buy for the children, 100% for pre sun juices and that type of thing. The food bank, we, we're off. You know, in the past, of course, you work, you buy groceries, you have boxes and boxes of fresh uh, vegetables in some churches that don't come from food, the food bank and they were in particular they were in white churches i mean boxes they were taller than i was of just crop i mean potatoes um lettuce um mangoes so much and so you know i took advantage of that of course i started my herb garden because we've been home and that type of thing so um i've been able to do some of those things um combine my cost of course i went with um spectrum so i had in that television didn't want a house phone, but a house phone for all for like $59. Um, and I have girls that have TVs in their rooms and I was paying, you know, 150 a month. So we go from 150 to $59 for those two services. I thought I was going pretty good. And of course, just making sure you watch that credit like you're saying to it. I mean, that's so important. So um, I don't want to continue to talk and I don't believe in talking and monopolizing because I can do that easy. But just kind of wanted to put my two cents. And I hope I wasn't speaking too fast. I'm a northern with southern roots with Southern uh, Roots, Mom and Dad. No, we thank you, Queen. We thank you for your insight. Um, the next, is, I think it's one more person up here that haven't had the opportunity to introduce themselves and chime in. Yeah, Okay, well, um, now I guess the brother may want to come in or the sister want to come in a little bit later. But Master, you, um, you know, do you want to jump right in here and jump on credit? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm before, before I was about to say something too, I said, I know you, you was already hitting on credit, man, but before credit, uh, real quick, I just want to um, talk about, you know, a couple of y'all had talked about um, like saving for an emergency. Um, and I know like standardly people will always say, you know, uh, you know, there's different type of funds, some fund for like a year in case they lose their job, you know, I got a three to six, uh, fun and you know I I have that as a backup plan, but I'm not talking about that right now. I'm gonna talk about having an emergency fund. You know, so like um I, I can't remember the statistics, man. Some some reports say it's like 58 percent. Some say 69 percent. 
Um, I know banking rates are like, so like 69%. They did like this, I uh, wrote an article last year, I think like of, of Americans um, don't have like an emergency savings. And usually people deem that to be a thousand dollars, but I'm not gonna put an amount on it because I don't know what may, consider, what may be considered emergency for someone. But um, I, I do want everybody to become mindful and become aware of that an emergency will happen in terms of finances. It will, you get what I'm saying? So like, for example, your car will break down, a tire will be flat. Um, there may be uh, like your refrigerator may go out. You know, um, and where I live at, you know, my hot water heater leaked from the upstairs to the downstairs. You get what I'm saying? So there will be an emergency. And so what you have to do is you have to plan ahead. You get what I'm saying? And so um, one thing, living in the present is great. You know, um, it, is, it is wonderful. But when you, a good thing about wisdom and understanding when you go through life is that you can begin to predict the future. You know, there's going to be great times. You know, there's going to be times that's going to be, ah, it's okay. You know, there's going to be times that's going to be like horrible. They're going to be bad. And in terms of being, you know, sometimes things is kind of bad, but it's not too bad. And what you want to do is be able to plan for an emergency. So like if, if my tire goes flat in my car, like right now, do I have enough money? Do I have enough money to get this tire fixed? You know, I don't know. Your tire may cost $100, maybe, maybe a $50, whatever it is. Make sure that you send that money aside every month to cover an emergency. And so some people will say, look, money to spare. And so then my argument will be go back and examine yourself and look at your budget. What can you cut? What can you cut? What are you, what are you willing to give up now to be better later? That's what wisdom come in. What am I willing to give up now to be better later? If I know, if I know that I need, if I had a thousand dollars in an emergency savings, if something happened, I know it would pretty much it, it will it would it would cover that. What can I give up? You get what I'm saying? Like the sister she may have to spend on groceries. You get what I'm saying? And so like you may find it like, man, you know, I go out to eat like seven times in a week, and I end up spending an extra two hundred dollars a week. What if you took that in half? So you know what? Instead of spending you know two hundred dollars a month going out to eat, what if I only spent seventy five dollars going out a month to eat? Get what I'm saying? And I take that 125 every, every single month. I take that 125. And what I do is I take it and I, and I put it, I put it in my savings account. You, get, you feel, you feel where I'm coming from? And if you take that 125, we'll just, I'm like $1,200. So easily right then you have that emergency savings fund. You get what I'm saying? And so little things like that you could do to kind of help have money set aside for an emergency. And again, it's very, very critical because an emergency will happen. It will happen. And to be honest, when a car breaks down, it's, and this is just my point of view. I, when my car breaks down, it's never like a hundred dollars. It's like six, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars to get whatever it is fixed. You get what I'm saying? Plan for the worst case scenario and whatever you can, um, whatever, wherever you can find that money, take the money and set aside. And also, too, um, when it comes like to savings, man, sometimes we worry about what other people think of us. And that has really gotten us into a lot of trouble. Um, I know there's like a saying of wanting to keep up with the Joneses. But if you watched, if there was a movie that came out about so. You don't necessarily need a pair of Jordans. I'm not saying nothing wrong with a pair of Jordans. You don't necessarily need anything. Like, you don't need that. You can go to, you can go like to JCPenney's or wherever it is that you go shop. I'm not sure. I'm not the one to see and tell people, you know, where to go to buy their clothes. But you can go places and find good clothes. That's not a lot of money. You get what I'm saying? You can take that extra money and put that money towards savings or put that money towards, you know, as my brother Stuart was talking about, you know, paying off a credit card or utilizing your credit correctly. Make sense of what I'm saying? And so like, I of just about, you know, in terms of like finances and money. So make sure that you are taking money and, and saving it. And again, the best way to do that is, is the very first point. Examine where you are financially. The best way to do that is to create a budget. Because if you create a budget and you itemize where everything is, and I know it may be anal, it may be something that you don't feel like doing, but just take the time to do it. And if you do that, I can literally promise you, you will find out like, man, I got a subscription over here. That's, I'm just taking out $12 a month. I should have been canceled that's for savings. It don't have to be $100 a month. It could be $20 a month. It could be $5 a month. The thing of it is just getting the mind frame of doing it. Just get in the mind frame of doing it. And once your mind is set on something, everything else will follow. And so if anybody else want to add on to that point, feel free to jump in. Well, you know, I add on, on brother, um, you know, I'm a part of a company called My Econ. And what you're talking about is what we consider is called income shifting. It's where you take money that you usually spend on one area and you shift that money into something else. So, you know, a, one, a lot of the examples that when we deal with income shifting, we deal with as far as dealing with your tax forms. A lot of people fill their tax forms out incorrectly. So when you fill your W-4 tax form out incorrectly, you automatically are overtaxed through the federal government every check. But once you learn how to correctly fill out your W-4, you can out every check on federal taxes. You can get that drop down to $35. $20, even $0. So you can get it shifted. So now you're no longer paying that $100 a week on federal taxes. So what you do is once you fix your W-4, you shift that money. Now you take that money 
and you put it in a contingency plan. So now you build your reserve funds up uh, just in case something happened, right? So now if you get an extra $100 a week and you want to build up, let's say $2,000, you get what I'm saying? You know, if you get an extra $100 a week, it's going to take $2,000 saved up. What you do now is, now you start eliminating debt. Because the first thing you want to do is get your emergency fund set up. You want to have your emergency fund, and also you want to have a fund like you were talking about, um, Master you a fund set up to be able to pay your finances in case something happens. So you want to have your emergency fund, and then you also want to have something where you are set up to be able to pay your bills set up. Your next thing that you would want to do is, now you want to start taking care of old bills. You know what I'm saying? We have bills that we are paying, so now you take that money, and once you take that money, um, once you take that money, you shift it to paying off bills. Then you go through a process of deciding to fix your credit. So now, not only are you um, paying off old bills, you got your emergency fund set up, you got you a fund set up wherein um, you can start fixing your credit. So now we deal with, okay, now let's go about taking these negative items off our credit report and let's start fixing our credit, you know? And this is all a cycle that you go through once you start income shifting. And you know, part of the company that I'm a part of, which is my econ, they teach you this, how to do this step free. Because a lot of us have never experienced financial freedom. You know, financial freedom is a freedom that a lot of us have never experienced. And it's something that is obtainable with hard work, with vigorous, you know, taking our time and deciding to do, like you're saying, instead of, it's like, y'all need to cut me off because I talk a lot. But like, you know, a lot of times we eat out a lot. Like the decisions that we make when we live our daily day of life is the, part of the reason why we are financially broke. A lot of us, we eat out every day. Every day we eat out. So now we are spending the day, not to mention the food that we eat ain't even good for us. That's a whole different conversation. But if you look at that money that you spend it, let's say you eat out twice a day. I mean, you're spending about $10, um, $10 a day eating out. Or if you're spending between $5 and $15, you're spending $15 a, a day to eat out. You multiply that times seven, you know, 15 times seven, you're looking at around what, 90, $95, somewhere around that range, um, 15, seven, that's what, 95, around $95, around $95 a, a week. So if you multiply that times four, you're looking at $400 a month that you've spent eating out twice a day. You would, you know, $200, you buy groceries. So we're spending. So it's not that we really don't have the money, is that we are misappropriating the money that we have and we are putting it in areas in which we should probably shouldn't be putting it in because we stand the power of money. And with that, I'm gonna concede and let somebody else jump in. I see we have two new people that have um, joined the conversation. Um, we have, I'm gonna let y'all introduce yourselves, you know, one at a time. Peace everybody. It's never up. I'm a little late, sorry for that. I came in, um, just listening in today. Um, that's all, I'm gonna pass the mic. Hey, hey, you, you know, I really like something that you said. Um, you spoke about the W-4 forms and how, a lot, you know, um, a lot of people, you know, fill, fill those out incorrectly. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, as a student, you know, I, I'm not claiming to know um, or, you know, be an expert or a teacher as far as finances. Um, but I, that's definitely something that I'm, I'm looking to, uh, you know, uh, get into myself because I'm, I'm literally having one third of uh, my check taken out, you know, between different taxes. And that's not even an exaggeration, uh, you know, and I, I'm out on child support, none of that, I'm a city official. But um, yeah, those taxes is, is is crazy. And that's something I wanna, uh, I wanna get educated on as far as, you know, just financial literacy in general. Cause we, we have to understand that we're under attack uh, on, on different levels, but we have to be able to respond. We have to be able to understand our, ourselves and, and how we're contributing to, um, you know, are, are conditioned by, you know, our ignorance. So uh, that's definitely, a, you know, it's definitely important things that I, you know, I want to. And just to piggyback on Stuart and, and comment that you were speaking about, I joined my econ a couple of years ago, and that was one of the first things I did. Um, you know, you fill out, you go to a job, and if you're on that job for years, like I'm usually in the district for five years, you fill out the W-4, I have two daughters at home, so I would immediately put three down. I would put three deductions, myself and the two children. And laws change, we never go and update it. It is there to update at any time. 
So one of the first things I did learn to kind of piggyback my story and what you just brought to the forefront is I think I took 14 deductions and you can take it. That sounds like 14. You don't have 13 children, but that's not, I think people have always, that's not true. The other thing that we did, and I'm sure still could chime in since he's with my econ as well, is we would turn the whole sheet back in. The top of it is the worksheet. That's for your records. HR don't need anything. That's why it's like a dotted line. You just did that. It's none. Of, it's really none of their business. That's not even between you and them. That's between you and the government. And you really just give them the slip at the bottom and say it has 14. It just has your total. All of your worksheet of what you're doing, they have nothing to do with that. So I get got paid monthly as a North Carolina State employee. And I think what I saw in my check it was close to $200 extra a month. And that is the shift where you can do something with that $200. So I just can, you know, I just wanted to tell my personal story about that since you had, you know, reiterated. So, so, just, so just to verify, uh, we, we're talking about, when, you know, when, you, when you're first going through orientation and they give you the W-4 form, you just want to make sure that um, you don't just, you don't want to team at, at the, you know, as your total. Yeah, so I changed mine to 14. It was different lines that you could take up to a certain amount of deductions, but that is for you. I can just share with Kay my uh, income tax. But for, before mm. learning this, for years, I would just take three. I was sitting on that as a young, mm. like back when I was probably 19 or something. You know, so I kind of just kept that up. And once I submitted it, say if I submitted it in 1997, it never changed. Sometimes, you know, um, people of African descent, we just don't keep up and we don't change. We just, and, you know, so we miss out. We miss out on getting our money back based on the law and what you can do. So I did, that was the first thing I learned. So yeah. And um, I was having two hundred dollars extra on my check each month, and that's substantial if you're trying to invest. Hello. And again, it did not hurt my income tax. I want to highlight that because then some people are like, well, what about income? Well, we don't take anything out yet. Because I remember it was times I would, I thought I was smart, so I learned some stuff. I remember it was times years before that I was back, so I would get all my money back besides what is it like FICA, and um, and so you know I thought I was doing something. But I just started doing what I just explained, and I got that money, and you know, you make it purposeful. So, you know, I used to invest instead of just spending it like you would normally do, you've been used to going about it. So just check that out, my top worksheet somewhere. So another time I went and be happy to give him, share with him, to so he can pull it up, and I can kind of go through it, or he can go through it, if he's done it. But that is the first thing I learned with my econ. Hello. Wow, powerful. Yeah, peace on um, um, peace, brother Richard. Um, glad you're up here on um, Elder. Glad you made it. Um, you made it right in on time. As they talking about the best four forms, you perfect time. <laughs> I I just want to say, uh, you, yes, I've been in my econ since 2017 and brought Stuart on, and I, I I'm humbled to be here. And uh, this is a great format, and I hope my message is coming through clear. I hope I'm not breaking up. But in terms of that W-4, see, what we actually teach you when you turn change that W-4, because you are a business owner, you got to understand, when you put that 10, that 14, you want you to put that 10 or that 14, a number like that. But I wouldn't advise you to do that if you're not in a business that is collecting deductions, such as your mileage, such as your cell phone, such as your internet. And the monthly fees that we charge to keep your website open when you become a business partner with us. So yes, you can change those things. And that's part of our program. That's the first part, change it. Then we go on to use that money to first eliminate debt. After we eliminate debt, as you get along in the program and we have classes on investing, you use that money after you eliminate your debt to invest. And it's just a cycle that we teach you, a strategy that we teach you, and this is what you can teach your kids. We offer, I have friends in my group now, they have 700 credit scores, so it is real people. It just takes dedication and motivation like Brother Stewart is showing me today, and it is powerful, and I'm just so proud that he joined me, and we are actually doing this, and uh, I, I'm really proud that we are in our company. I got a group with 18,000 people, and we've been conscious for almost 10 years, but I've moved to a place, I'm 50 years old, I've moved to a place where I understand how important your credit is. I'm sorry about that, but uh, man, it's just so much I, I would love to share, and, and, and this is a great format. Let me conclude. Um, we thank you for coming, um, Brother Richard. And like he said, he did bring me into my econ, so he's my big brother with my question. And not your W-4, that's something that, um, it's your W-4, then it's another form also um, that Mona's talking about with your dependents, as far as that's your claiming your dependents. 
that's a different, I think that's the W9, but I don't want to say for sure. But the W4 is the form that you go and it takes you directly to the IRS.gov. And what it'll do, it'll take you there and it allows, and I don't want to get too much into that because we, um, you know, it's part of the conversation, but it's not the whole right. conversation, you know. So we may can do a second part to get further into it. But in the bottom, I would tell you that as soon as I changed my W4, I instantly started seeing an extra $100 per week as instantly. It was instantly. .gov website especially if you do it through my income, it's going to take you to the website where it's going to tell you exactly, it's going to bring the chart up for you and it's going to tell you and it's going to print it and do everything for you. All you got to do is sign it and give it to your boss. It's going to do it for you because 80% of all, and a lot of people depend on that money at the end of the year. You want to get it back at the end of the year. So you're allowing the government to keep it for you all throughout the year. And at the end of the year, you get that money back. But what about the hard times that you go through throughout the year? when you're running into a tight spot where that money could have been used. You get what I'm saying? So it's, it's income shifting. So you want to shift that income elsewhere. And it's a lot of income, but you know, um, Matthew or anybody else y'all want to jump in here? And, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, first, I want to say something to Brother Nabot. Brother Nabot had said something. He said uh, he was not here as, as uh, he said, he, he doesn't claim to be any type of master. He said he was here, you know, as a student, which I thought was, was great what he said. But I want to I let him know something, man, you know, uh, my righteous name is Master You, and um, there's def different definitions uh, um, for for master. There's one ex definition that's uh, or proficiency within a particular area, but there's another definition that I really like, and it said it's an artist of of consummate skill. And most of the time, people think consummate, they think of terms of like intercourse, but there's another definition of consummate that talks about having a high degree of skill and flair, um, complete or perfect in order to reach perfection or become proficient in anything that you're doing. That you must always be a student. So a master in himself is always someone who is acquiring knowledge, um, uh, uh, you know, to and acquiring wisdom and acquiring understanding of that which they are uh, hoping to master. And with that being said, brother, we are always students. You get what I'm saying when it comes to finances or whatever it is. But anyway, I'm from this conversation too in terms of like W4 and et cetera, et cetera. And I, um, I know Stuart was deaf. I know he wanted to hit on this credit score. He's brought it up a couple of times. But one thing I want to mention is that when you start saving for your emergency, make sure that you go into research and you choose an account that gives you the best bang for your bump best bang for your buck because usually banks will give you a very, very low interest rate or whatever it is. It's very, very low regardless of how much money that you have. And so I would definitely say go do research um, on, on choosing a bank. Um, most of the time, online banks offer better interest rates um, in terms of having like a savings account or a money market account. Like for myself, I use Ally Bank, which is spelled 8.5%. So, you know, um, I would, you know, that 1.5%, I'm not sure how much money you may put up there every month. But even if it just, even if, even if you end up making $10 off of that money by putting it in Ally in terms of like interest, as opposed to having it into um, your savings, your emergency savings into account, they will only give you a dollar. I prefer money. Even if that more money is only as a $9 difference, I prefer the one that is maximizing the amount of money that, that I have. Um, I know TIA, TIAA, which is another, um, well, I use it online because there's no branches here. I think they were offering, um, I know it was 1.75% for an, um, using their, uh, their, their savings account. And again, online banks usually, 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 now Mark, listen to my words, usually offer a higher um, interest rate orders like um, Wells Fargo, um, Bank of America, et cetera, et cetera. So when it comes to saving, you get what I'm saying? I would, I would more prefer in terms of me, I would use like an online bank. And there's, you, you can go do your research, um, each stuff, but you can weigh that stuff yourself. But you have stuff like, you know, Discover Bank, you know, Discover that they, they use credit cards. I think, if I can't remember off the top of my head, they were offering like 1.5% interest. In your research, do your due diligence. And um, whichever one works for you, you know, you take that and you, you make sure your money is being funded over there in terms of an emergency fund. And one thing, I, one thing that I have done is that I just make sure so whether it be $25 or $50 or $75, it just automatically goes. I don't even miss it. It's like another bill to me. I treat it like a bill. Make sense what I'm saying? Well, is it, yeah, is, does yeah, this yeah, stuff make sense to anybody? Know what and I'm I, I just want to say, uh, I just want to say, I truly do appreciate uh, you, Brother Master, you. Uh, Brother Richard, you know, uh, Santa, for which you for which you all just, you know, contributed, not just, you know, to an, an answer my question, but the information that y'all just revealed. Because... Y'all just dropped some powerful bombs that, you know, is, it permeates, you know, a lot of our people. As far, and, and like you said, we can get more into depth on this and sisters are, you know, are into the information that y'all revealing right now is so powerful. And I can say that, you know, this is information that I can attest to and not being a witness of, but having the information you mentioned about having a business along with correcting your, your uh, W-4. I have a, I'm, I, I, I want to also ask a question that as a, does an independent, 
your own business because I know that but that's you know, a, a 1099. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and see what people don't understand with that 1099, and it depends on what you're doing. You could be driving. It's so many deductions you can get as a driver, you know, in terms of your equipment. But the bottom line is when you with my econ, we are technology savvy. So we give you this app that'll keep track of all where you keep track of, of your payments and whatnot. But any other business you can create while you're in my econ, and, and it's just this deep. You can join my econ, you can say, I want to learn how to be a drop shipper. And when you spend money to get those programs, because you're trying to help your overall marketing business, you're able to write those, those are now deductions because Thanks. you're using them in your business. It's like buying deductible. But if you're not writing that down, if you're not getting your mileage, if you the magazine, the Kip Linger magazine delivered to your house, you're paying that subscription, you write it off. You want to write off as much of your lifestyle as you can, but you got to have that business. And that's what we provide with the website of financial literacy and all the different packages. But the main point is like this show right now. It's about joining a community that's talking about money in a positive way. And the bottom, oh yeah, you can. You, are, um, you can um, file it um, with the job that you mentioned as a private contractor. That is your own private own. Um, you can file it, brother, and you can use it as far as... Um, your is, is where is that right now? Um, and like um the elder is talking about as far as writing all this stuff off when he talked about the um when he talked about the cat list uh, to all your receipts and everything and you can just put it up here like I have it like right here on my phone and like I can let y'all like and every buy things I I put it right in here I take a picture of my receipt and it's like it's your personal accountant to keep up so I shouldn't have done that <laughs> but um you can um. I didn't fix it, but you can um throw your receipts away and stuff, and and it keeps it for you. So it's just like your personal. Yes, um, that's that's right off, and that's something that we all need to start taking advantage of as far as having a home based on businesses and um, but that is something that you can about, and you know, and you know, we all learn it, brother. So you know, this 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 is financial literacy is something that you know we all take it that I don't know. You get what I'm saying? But the little that I do know. You know, I'm the, I always been the type of person that I wanna I wanna share the knowledge. It, it ain't no fun if I only know it by myself and ain't trying to help nobody else out. And I would tell y'all on um, that this stuff works, and can't nobody tell me it don't work. I'm fixing my own credit as we speak. Like I'm doing it myself. I'm not paying nobody. I have all the information that I need. I've already sent the paperwork off to the creditors so they can come and verify. If they have to verify for one, that is mine. And then the step that you take once they verify to get it taken off your credit agents on um, report without actually paying these folks, man. And um, it's a lot with all this, you know. But we all gonna help one another. We all gonna help one another grow. And you know, you know this, this, and you know, growth comes in all different forms, you know. And this is what we're trying to do, and that's the purpose of this for us all to grow. And so um, now we're dealing with credit. Um, you know, credit is the you know there used to be a saying that says that. What cash is king, but credit is queen now. But in this technology age, credit is where it's at, man. It's, but right now, credit is what you want. And with good credit, you can do a lot. And one thing that um, Master Yu was talking about when he was talking about putting your money in, um, you know, in the banks or um, different savings accounts, you know, the only thing I would say is I know that credit unions are usually better when it comes to the interest rates. Credit union. So if you can get into a credit union or some type of federal credit union, but also it's a black-owned bank called this black-owned bank that's in the in America. It's in Raleigh. I think it's Farmers and Mechanics or Mechanics and Farmers, one or the other. But you know, we really serious. Like we want to bank with that black-owned bank. You know, that's a black-owned bank that's been around for a long time. And you know what I'm saying? And they do got all our rates, but I, but it's a black-owned bank that I do. I'm trying to bank with, but they denied me the first time. But you know, I try back again. But with credit, man, you know, the one thing I just want is more than just you paying off bills or having a credit card and, you know, making your payments on time. It has something to do with your debt on um, ratio payments. It's broken down like a pie. It's like a pie chart, mm -hmm. right? And on this pie chart, it tells you what 30% of your credit, so on and so on, and it breaks it down to a whole 100%. So a lot of us have the concept of think that if we, you know, take out a loan and make sure we make our payments on time that that's all we need to do. Um, and, and it's more than that, making your payments on time. But if you got a credit card, you don't want to go over 30% of the maximum amount. So let's say if you got a thousand dollar limit on your credit card, 
you don't want to spend over 30 percent so you don't want to spend over 300 dollars of your max anything over 300 30 percent of the max amount and you want to make sure you pay your payments on time and it's something called like credit um um credit um i can't think of the word we're in you switch your credit cards to make your payments and it's letting the credit agencies know that you are or that you are financially literate in credit because you're showing them that you're going to switch your money around a percent especially when it comes to your credit cards and then your debt ratio the amount of debt that you have in the ratio you want to have that less than like 30 percent also you don't want it above that you know and this is stuff that i've been learning slowly um thanks to richard um you know i've been learning it i actually knew I actually knew a lot about this, but you know what I'm saying? You know, okay. Um, but you don't use it. You know, my, my daughter always, she do this every time, every night. Now, so if y'all know it. So the ones that be a peak of it, it's every night thing. But um, with that being said, you know, does somebody else want to jump in? I know Mona knows a lot when it dealing with, um, as far as loans and put your money in so you can get a good return. And you know, we can't talk about stocks. We can't talk about crypto, but these are other areas that you can in your investment if you play the market right. And I do play crypto. I play crypto and I play stocks and bonds also. I play that for precious metals, precious metals too. It's just, it's just taking a few steps at it. But somebody jump in, please, and help me. <laughs> hey, 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 brother, brother hey, go, go, go. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Elder. Go ahead, Elder. Can I just say on that emergency fund so we can get that right in our mind? Mm -hmm. I'll real quick. You know, for an emergency pop up, your car break down, you need a such and such to get it towed, or you need a new water heater. You know, you and your mate decide what considered an emergency in your family, and that's what you budget for to have some money that you can quickly get. So even if it's in that 1% or 2% or whatever, as long as you can get to a, a nice amount, really held out, you can go get that money. That's what that emergency fund is. Other than that, right now, I would suggest you save your money <laughs> for these prices going up. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Go on. I love that's, it, man. That's, that's right, exactly. You know, you know, a lot of these, I was talking about having your money in an online, in an online bank. Um, these online banks, they give you, like a lot of them will give you like a, a free ATM card. Um, you know, they would give you like checks so you could easily add in an online bank. But most of the time when you're talking about saving saving or saving for an emergency fund, you know, that's not money that you want to be able to have access to every day. You get what I'm saying? So, um, but what the elder said was right on point, but I want to piggyback cards. Um, I used to be on a mind frame, like I didn't want credit. I want to pay off all my debt, et cetera, et cetera. And I still have that particular mind frame, but um, just through reading, I have, under, have come to the understanding of the power of credit. And he said, if cash is king, then um, uh, credit is, is queen. Um, in some instances, I might even say that <laughs> I have learned to, well, starting to learn to use my credit card and use my credit card wise. As the brother said, you know, whatever it is, make sure that you stay underneath 30% of your, of, your, um, of, your, of, your credit, of your credit limit. Now, um, for me, I have found it that it's better to have a credit card than have a debit card. Um, this is just me personally, and, I, and, I, and I'm a business mind. I use my business card. And you may say, well, Master, why would you do that? Because if there's anything in terms of like liability, if you use your debit card, they may take X amount of money out of your account and you have to notify the bank and do all this stuff. And usually the bank takes longer to refund your money. But with the bank, if I'm not mistaken, there is, there is no set amount on what you may be liable for. And if I'm wrong, someone please let me know. There's no set amount on what you may be liable for. So if someone spend, yeah, like you might be liable for a thousand, you might be liable for all of it. You know, I'm not sure. But I know with a credit card, depending on who you have, a credit card, um, they may only hold you liable for like $50 or whatever, whatever it is. You know, and a, and a credit card company will, um, will you know, re refund your money, et cetera, et cetera. Another thing about the power of having a credit card as, a, as, as opposed to a debit card, don't get me wrong, having a debit card is great. I'm not knocking I cannot. With your debit card, you can pay your bills on time every single month. You can deposit money in there every single month, $10,000. You're doing all these wonderful things, but you are not building your credit score. If you have a credit card, as long as you pay that credit card off every single month, what you are doing is you're building your credit score. But you're building your credit score. You cannot build your credit score with a debit card at all. You can't do that. And this is something now, like, you know, I have two kids and I know when my kids get older in high school, instead of giving them, you know, um, you know, I have a, obviously have a debit card. What I want to do is show them how to properly use credit. So when my kids that are young, older, they will have good credit scores. What messed most of us up in terms of like credit, we have like a bad stigmatism towards credit or credit cards or whatever, or what have you, is because we don't pay these things off. And these interest rates are a killer. These interest rates are a killer. So if you, you sit and wait, um, you, know, you know, you may go to on, you know, uh, from on like $500 on a credit card, you don't pay it, you know, for like months or months on end or a year on end, you may find out that you owe $1,000. So as long as you stay on top of that stuff, credit can help you. You get what I'm saying? Credit can be a pow to to have in your bag. Um, with some jobs now, you, you can't even get the job unless you got a particular credit score. Tell me if I'm wrong. You can't, you can't get it. You know, every, a lot of these things revolve around you having credit. 
So I just want to make you all aware of that. And um, again, if, if Brother Richard or uh, Brother Set um, Haru want to chat. Um, I would just like to share, you know, with chiming on what, what everyone was saying. Um, a while, some years back, I, I don't know, I know we have a range of ages, but Jay-Z um, did a rap song. And one of the things he talked about was credit and the credit of Black Americans or whatever, King, when you say past the King. I think it was a long time ago, my dad has, has retired, but has had a lot of businesses and worked for the electrical company in D.C. One of the things he complained about, he's like, you know, cash ain't even no damn good no more. See, I have to excuse my French. He said, I wanted to pay cash to pay to reserve a room. So at that time, he was telling me it had made it, the world had made a shift. That credit was more important than cash. You know, one time it was like, you have, you have cash, you can pay for something in cash. They, you know, hotels do not want the cash anymore. So that told us it was a shift. So I just wanted to kind of point that out. But if you own a home, one of the things I learned a few years back when I, um, it purchased a second home. So one of my homes is kind of considered a business. I kind of use that residence for a business, my first home. And the second one, um, I finally learned something no one had told me. And many of you may already know, but I want to share because I was floored. Um, after 30, almost 30 years of being in a home and having an AC unit, and probably the last five or six years that I lived in a very nice home, I felt like a very nice, that I kept having to get Freon in my AC unit. Um, it, would, and, um, it would cool off, but you could tell it was a difference. And of course, I had to pay for it. So the second home I purchased, it was introduced to me about home warranty insurance. And I know many of you seen it, you've heard of it, but I utilized it. And I want to just kind of talk about it because I've shared it with everyone I could, um, white and black. I mean, when I say white people that, you know, um, when I worked in a school building that wasn't aware of it, it's different, it's different from the insurance. So if you don't know, um, you have Home Shield. I'm sure you may have heard of Home Shield, Old Dominion, where I would purchase this like $500 home warranty insurance for my home. And it's five hundred dollars a year, or for instance, Home Shield will let you pay a monthly fee. Old Dominion will not, but it was a lifesaver. When I purchased my second home, it was a used, um, I mean, not used. I, it was a foreclosed home. My first one I built. It was nice about it that warranty because what I did is I purchased it. I came in, and whatever I saw could have been a problem. Even after the inspection, I called it in, and I had a trade fee of sixty dollars. That's all I had to pay. So when I knew something was more expensive, um, I called it in. Whether it was plumbing, air, air unit. Um, and they would come fix it. I remember getting a refrigerator for, they giving me a check for like $800. Mind you, I only paid $60. I had um, gotten a brand new dryer because once they brought someone in, they were saying it was too much to fix. I paid $60 um, and, I got a dry, and I got a dryer. I'm going to be honest, I picked the kid up because I got a dryer from my other house. The refrigerator that I got, it was nothing wrong with it, but the freezer part, I still had it in my barn. So I'm just sharing it because I did not know because I was thinking all the years that I paid for free on I could have got a whole new unit because if it cost you five thousand dollars, if it was already attached to your house, all you had to do is pay it trade fee. So if you don't know, I just want to share that that is something worth getting. My first home, I actually am renting that now. I don't have the business in it, but if I had rented it as Mona, you know, my air unit went out. I don't have to go and try to cough up whatever the month the cost is five hundred a thousand too. I pay that trade fee. It's guaranteed to be fixed. Well, they're gonna give me the money to purchase the unit. So I just want to share it <clears throat> you. because we were talking about emergency funds. The other thing is, um, I know we talked about having emergency funds with online banks, and I think that's an incredible idea. But I will tell you that I have told a lot of my bank account um, accounts, my children, you know, before they were one, I mean, by the time they were one, I got everybody saved in the account, thought I was doing something. Well, it is like 0.03%. You've seen it, and if you're like me over many years, you needed your money. I remember say, calling myself saving over the years when I was young, $100, and at the end of the year, if you did not take $5 back out of it, <laughs> Or 20, you had what, like $103, $101? But it's called a savings because it was a 0.02% interest. I said, I would never do that because I actually sell products for the state. I am assigned to every insurance carrier that you can think of. Let me share with you. I took all of my savings for the most part and put it into accounts that's going to interest bill for your children. Meaning, I picked what I wanted to pay or the amount I want and I put the money in it. And it is a living benefit. So I have a lot of death benefits. I mean, I want, you know, it's nice for these children, but you know, okay, but we want to live. So I went into IRAs, I went into um, annuities, and I'm going to tell you a story about this. I took my children's money because they're not going to use their savings. I might end up using it in the past. Honestly, if I need it, I put it in. If I put a thousand dollars in their account, and now I'm, like, I'm the one putting the money in. So um, I got annuities where you can see after year one that you have interest, they're like five, six, seven percent. 
return. And you can also take the money out for emergencies and still have a death benefit. It does not touch the death benefit in the death benefit role. So, I mean, look into those. I'll be glad to share with you because that is where your money makes money. So I always tell people, I say, I let my money make money. They keep trying to figure out what I'm talking about. But if they don't, if they don't already know, they don't come ask me. I don't say anything because if somebody said keywords to that, you know, keywords like that to me when I was younger, I'm going to come see you. So a lot of times, you know, I say things to share, but I'm not going to run people down. I love everyone. Um, and family, I'm sure all of you might know, or I, you know, I just learned over the last few years. So just wanted to, I don't want to talk a lot, but I just want to share going on some stage. And I know I want to do money. I'm going to just be honest. Hundred dollars, we'll take that now. It's hundred and two. What you do? But take five dollars out. You will not get that zero point three. <laughs> At the end of the year, I have to laugh because it's funny. Because they call it a savings. They say this stuff to get them out thinking you're doing something. It's funny. You're not doing anything. They they a trip. I'm, just, I'm that's why I'm really late. Your credit card kind of going take you back in on um set Haru um brother mess mess with you. You know I would mess my card sometimes. I need stuff. I would pay it every month. It would never go down. But if you have a $10,000 um, credit limit, this is how I look at it. I immediately reset my mind. I say to myself, 30%, because that's going to affect your credit. And they will tell you, if you get a special, they'll say, you know, keep it under 30%. So if I get a $10,000 credit card, I say I have three, up to 3,000 is spent or less. So in my mind, it's not 10,000, it's 3,000. Remember, the credit is better than cash. So go ahead and set your mind. Don't think you have 10. Tell yourself you have something different. That might help. I'm just telling you what helped me. I'm just sharing it right now. Um, I hold it. <laughs> um, and I spread out. I'm like, um, set her I'm gonna look into the brothers that you that he's with it. But I do, you know, I'm always getting restored. I'm always, I'm, I love to learn. I like to share. I have these policies that are. I'm gonna go back to annuity. Everybody knows OJ. I'm gonna tell you a story. And please, this is what got my mind. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> OJ Simpson, y'all know that he was stupid feeling. He lost everything. Everything. The only thing the government couldn't touch is his annuity. Because when Ben Franklin and them back, when they was, you know, using us to build this country, they put some things in law that's still in law. The law can't change. He had an annuity. Who had annuities for the most the majority of who gets to look like in this country? But we're going to talk about people with money. You're in a certain class. They share this information. You're around people that have all this information. So, of course, you remember who he hung with. You know who his wife was. And he had an annuity. They took everything he had and couldn't touch his annuity. That is why this man can live on that. He gets paid for a lifetime. 28000 a month because he had an annuity. They couldn't touch it. It's protected under the government. And that's what I started investing my money in because it's a life item. That's what he makes every month from his annuity to live on. 28000 a month. And then when he dies, it's the death benefit attached. So that's what I'm talking about, your money making money. You don't want to just have something so when he dies, you just whip it. I want to that really quick. Could, so, you, could, you, could you define annuity, annuity again, uh, just okay. in simple terms? So, you know, you have... Term. You've heard of life insurance, mm -hmm. right? Yep, she, she yeah, on the she old part of life insurance, you pay this money of my mother when she was younger. She paid this life um, insurance monthly fee. And then I remember us living in New Jersey, living in the project, and I remember had it for years, and then when she couldn't pay it, what happened? She didn't have that policy anymore. She didn't have, she paid five or ten years, and we don't have it for a couple months, and all your money's gone, and the policy's gone. And the new fee is a fancy, it's more of a interest-based account. It's almost like a savings. That's it's a savings. Meaning, if you have an if you have an annuity for twenty five thousand, it's not going to pay twenty five. It pays more because it actually builds up like a savings. The only way it would it will only pay your face amount, save your face amount twenty five thousand. If you took out money like I'm saying, you can take it and you don't owe them you don't owe them anything. You don't have to pay it back. It what it happens though, your twenty five thousand face value. If you pay a certain amount of years, it may end up depending on what it is. It may end up saying if you don't ever take anything out, because it'll show you. See, it, it shows you. Without you um, jeopardizing the life insurance policy, you don't have to pay that. 
So, I mean, I'm just kind of quickly trying to share because I know I would have some stuff, but that type of thing. So they also bring in your whole power. So, because it's your money. Your money ain't money. You don't owe anybody because it's your dad's your money. And it ain't that 0.3% percent, percent, you know, it's higher. It makes more than these savings and these banks. So you always want an emergency fund, but you also want to plan for your retirement. You want to plan if I want something and I want my money to sit somewhere and make money cash or whoever can have two, but I want to live here. Does that make sense? I'm yeah, it's no. Is, yeah, there, it is there anything we need to be okay. careful of as far as uh, looking at, you know? Um, I would, no, let me. Let me I, 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 I'm, I, okay, oh, basically what she's saying pretty much is, is, is right and exact. You get what I'm saying? I would just make sure whatever insurance company that you go through, um, make sure that everything is like, you know, you may have an annuity. Let's say you may have an insurance policy a whole life that may say, okay, cool. Your death benefit is 20, <laughs> and it's $250,000. The way that it works is pretty much your money gets like invested. You know, the money that you put in every side, there's more money in there that you can pull out. You get what I'm saying? There's more money that you can pull out and you can use. And just like she was saying, you may reach a certain age to say 60 or whatever it is. And you may say, I want to take that you plan. Because what she, again, what she's saying is it's right and exact. You may say, okay, cool. When I turn 65, I want to get paid $1,500 a month or $2,000 a month. Whoever it is with your insurance company, they will tell you the exact plan you need and how much. Okay, cool. You need to put in $250 a month for X amount of years in order to get this amount of money when you plan on retiring. And like she said, you can take that money. I don't want to use the term borrowing, but technically you can take, you know, at, at the end of the first year, um, you may end up having like a total you can take that $700 and use it for whatever it is that you want. But that $700 is now gone. So if you go to, if you, the bad part is if you go to get more money, you have, with that first year, you only got $700 in right. there that you can use for whatever it is. If you use that money and something else happened, you can't use that $700 only negative side to it. But overall, it's good. The mind frame that you want to have in is, um, and, and, and it's said a lot of great points, is to put yourself in a situation where I don't need that now. That's right. for the future. You get what I'm saying? Like that's that's right. something that's off in the future. Exact. I'm not just saying it's right exact. And that's why I would say the other reason of having a savings, like an emergency savings. Yes, you know, if I pull out, you know, my interest, what I had an in interest, maybe only eight dollars, and you know, what I pulled out is I'm not gonna get that anymore. Um, but I would rather pull out I mean, if something comes up emergency quickly. You get what I'm saying? That's quickly. I can build that back up. But I would rather have that annuity for the long haul for something in the future when I plan on retiring. And if I need it now, I need it now. But I want to have other stuff in place so I don't have to touch that. Can I, I share a strategy what I'm saying? with you guys that we use in my income? Okay, we teach yep. you, and we were talking about kids, the sister was talking about children. We teach you how to hire your children in your business. Somebody mentioned earlier about research. So I encourage you to research. They are giving $12,000 a year to hire your child. Now, we tell you how to open an account, how to put the money in the account, how to pull the money out of the account on things that you're going to need, tennis shoes, their school clothes, different little things, just putting that money in there, creating that paper trail, but giving them a position in your company, your business. Whether they are tech savvy and know how to get you on Instagram or, you know, straighten up the a home office. She talked about the home. You got to have a business to write off the home. We teach you all those little things, but a lot of that stuff is gradual. You know, you can't say I didn't have my children for 4000 this year and you haven't did $1,000 in business or you haven't did anything. So we teach you these strategies that they use, like I say, to be able to go to school and get some training, even online, that you can write off that training to build your business. Once you commit yourself to a lifestyle, I'm basically saying this also. If you learn how to invest, and, and Stuart has seen, seen my my, my point. If I know how to invest that 250 for that annuity, I guarantee I'll get a better return than they're going to give me. We sometimes pay for this stuff that we need to learn to do ourselves. Because if you can get a bigger return than a bank can get, a bank may be getting 20% return on the investment. If you can get a 30% or 40% over the next 10 years, you don't need them, but we need this information. We need to be around people talking about this. We need to know that it is information out there like paying your children $12,000 per year. That's on the IRS, you can Google it. But how do you do it? How do you set up the account? We give you those details that you need to do. I just want to end that because that was all good stuff. Y'all got some gems going. Yeah. yeah. All dropping powerful information. Yeah, let me add on. Um, and one thing that's great about the annuity is that the annuity takes the highs of the stock market, but it don't take the dips. So, you know, like the stock market crash, stock market crash, annuities will keep going. It will keep going straight. Now, not up, but they'll keep going vertical. And they only takes, it only takes the gains. It don't take the dips. That's the great plan that the other people have been playing. The annuities do not take the dips. And once I found that out, that was it, like yo, you know, because we noticed. Mm. 
It ain't working. The microphone ain't working. I'm gonna call you back. <laughs> hey, um. Hey, yo, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we hear you. All right, um, yeah, listen, y'all, um, y'all take over. I'll be back. Now. <laughs> <laughs> ain't gonna do the choice, okay, man. I'll be piece. right back. Bro. Um, this master, you, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just add on like one, one final thing in terms of like using credit or having like a, uh, like a, like a credit card. And if somebody want, I'm sorry, somebody, you want to say something, Elder? No, no, sir. I, I, I'm just listening. That, that wasn't me. If you say credit, it. Oh, okay, okay. It, well, somebody want to add on with something? But go on with your credit, because I, I, I want to add on to that after you do that. Okay, cool. Um, again, you know, I had said some things about, you know, just having a credit card. But uh, one thing to keep in mind with a credit card, some, and a lot of people don't utilize this, is with a credit card, a credit card will, 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 will offer you, a lot of them do like a concierge service. And basically what a concierge service is pretty much like a, it's a service, in a, basically like a service assistant that'll help you reserve and, and, and find things. So like, for example, I know the credit card I have, like they'll like help me and like if I'm traveling, they will help me book a hotel, help me find one and they'll book it. They'll give like recommendations on really good dinner spots to go, tell you how much they charge and they will book your reservation for certain places. And so if you're somebody who's really busy or, or you need something like the last minute, um, you know, your credit card, like, you know, Call these credit card companies if you have one, and like do 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 your due diligence and research. A lot of these credit cards all you know offer like a lot of services to customers, and people don't utilize this stuff because people don't research. And so you know, I think the elder was saying like uh, earlier, you know, make sure that you go and research, research and read, and see what this credit card that you're using. You know how you know what are what are things they're offering me? How much cash back do they're offering me? Do I get you know free flying miles if I use if you type person that fly all the time and Maybe this credit card, you know, offer you this type of stuff. You get what I'm saying? So the credit, these credit cards offer you all type of services that a debit card does not offer. Now, again, I'm not saying that I don't have a debit card. Debit card, I wouldn't use a debit card. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is there is power if you know how to use credit. There is power. There is power in it. And so I know the elders say they want to add on. Feel free, elder. Yes, sir. And, and on to that credit. See, we have to not, when you was looking at it, that's one of the services that a bank would offer. Now they might be charging you 19% to use that credit or 24% depending on your, your, your credit score. But I want us to look at credit differently. See, look at that 750, that 800, when you get that credit score, it's what you're gonna do with it. Let's buy some multifamily housing with that credit score. If we're gonna get it up, let's get it up to do something with it. And what we suggest in my econ is something like multifamily housing. See, that's buying the asset with that credit at a low rate because you got it at 5% because you're on the VH loan. It just depends on you and your situation, but we have to think about it. We have to look bigger. That credit score, yeah, I know what y'all talking about, getting these nice things, but I want us to look at how we look at it in my econ, getting that multifamily home, that multiplex. I got my 800 credit score. I want a loan to buy this multiplex. Let these two pay off of that one, and I go back after a year, and I buy another one. Let's think of credit like that also. Anybody else want to add on to what the elder was saying? Well, you know, let me jump back in with what I was talking about. Um, I don't know what I missed. I hope I hope I ain't lost my fault. What was I talking about? Um, annuities. Yeah, it was dealing with the annuities, yeah. Um, the fact that they don't take the dips, you know. Um, but like the elder said, that you can do yourself. Because you got to understand, the banks invest our money. Like, you know, for every $900, I mean, yeah, every that we deposited, in, every $100 that we deposit in the bank, the um bank can um the Fed can print um deposit every ninety we deposit they can print another hundred. It's one or the other. Either every hundred we deposit they can print ninety. I think that's what it is. Every hundred we deposit they can. Not only do they use our money to invest our money when we deposit in the bank, they also use it to get more money printed. So that's why when we got these, they just printed this money and gave us these stimulus checks. But if you look at it, and that's what I really wanted us to talk about that um you know how we took this stimulus money. You know, those of us that take didn't take advantage of the dip in the stock market because we had a mini crash. You know, those of us that because the price of silver went down to around eleven dollars an ounce when silver was being sold for thirty-six dollars an ounce, like the beginning of this year. So with the stock market crash, 
dealing with these companies. And, you know, a lot of us, I don't know, but I was telling people to take advantage of it. You know, like when Mona was talking about homeowners, you know, uh, refinance your house for zero interest rate because the banks was losing money. So like you could have refinanced your money, I mean, your house for zero interest rate and really didn't have to pay no interest rate. So a lot of people made money doing this deal. A lot of people made money. Millionaires was made. You got to look at those that people that own um, a lot of the um, stocks we dealing with, the um, the um, the um, hotel stocks. I can't think of it. It's an individual company, but it's some of the dealing in the hotel sales. Then you got the cruises. The cruises, um, the companies, their stocks plummeted because people ain't going on cruises. Then, of course, you know, you got the um, airplanes. You know, that's why um, Trump bailed out Boeing because their stocks plummeted because people wasn't using these stocks. You can, you can, say, you can safely say that eventually people are going to start back flying on planes. Like this, this airplane is going to start back moving. So investing in stocks that may have dropped 50 to 75% within just to make sure that they don't go belly up or they don't merge. And that's how people, a lot of people lose their money with the stocks. When these companies decide to merge, you get what I'm saying? And your stocks, then you lose all your money. But if you do your due diligence and look into some of these companies, you know, eventually, you get what I'm saying? So people are going to start back um, going back to motel. They're going to start traveling. The same with these um, boat companies. You know, people are going to go back on cruises. Also, you know, with companies that you can, um, that is going to go belly up and those that's going to recover. You got to be smart about that. Then also, we got to look at the be investing in right now. Even though we are against, <laughs> and, like, I'm against, <laughs> I'm no type of vaccine, but you know that the pharmaceutical companies are coming. So that, that would be a good investment right now. I'm just being real. You is a good investment right now. Because eventually, they coming with it. So you might as well get in and make you some money. You get what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, when you look at this market, like what a lot of people see opportunities. Because at Facts. the end, like, like Polite said, um, at the end of the rainbow, it's a money bag. Somebody going to get paid at the end of this rainbow. Um, This money or this fiat currency ain't the end all be all. But right now, we know we need fiat currency. Currency, you know what I'm saying? So we know we need it, you know, because we have to get into the stock game. Um, like um Mr. Richard, um, I know he he, he deals with stocks like me. You know what I'm saying? So like I deal with um an app that I like to use, and I be telling everybody to use the app is um Acorn. They take your change and invest it in stocks. You know, you don't pick the stock. You know, some people want to control what stocks that they pick. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people got their money in their 401k plan. Well, you know that money in the 401, you want to take advantage of it and decide, you know what. I want to know what y'all invest my money in. How's my portfolio? Do y'all have my portfolio being aggressive? Is it not aggressive? I have an aggressive portfolio. Well, for me at my age. Now, the older you are, you might not want your portfolio to be as aggressive because you don't want to be able to lose that much money. But like, if you get into it, to take a loss or gain, you know what I'm saying? Because sometimes big games are lost. You know, but I don't know what y'all talking about, so I just had to jump that in. I lost my chance. Well, somebody can jump in, but... Um. No, Brother Stu, what you're saying is, is right and exact in terms of stocks, man. You know, I'm, I'm no expert in stocks at all, and I'm pretty much a baby in it, but I've, I've been, I have like, you know, like four or five books here at the house that I like read all the time and, you know, um, just utilizing some things myself. Um, I, I use Vanguard to, to invest, you know, you all can look up Vanguard. Vanguard is like, it's one of the best companies. He was saying, well, Acorn, Acorn to take your change and invest. You have a company called like Webull, M1 Finance, or you have Robinhood, and I also invest in Robinhood. And like your brother hit on a lot of points. The airlines, even though the stocks may be low now, um, but airlines is big business. And you know, certain, there's certain inter industries they're not gonna let fail. They're not gonna let banks fail. Um, they're not gonna let these uh, these airplanes, um, airplane companies, they're not gonna go back up. And when these things are gonna go back up, and, and, and this is my opinion, because you really can't predict the stock market. I mean, you can look at um, like the whole candlestick charts and things of that nature, which is a okay. whole other conversation, but you really, you, you're never 100% on what's gonna go. But what you can do is do like proper research. You can you can figure you can figure from oil and things of that nature. But I'm here to tell you, man, oil ain't going nowhere no time soon. I know people talk about solar energy and all you know all the type of stuff. Solar energy at this point in time, I didn't say 50, 60 years from now. But oil when and when oil bounces back, and I know there's going stuff going on with you know like uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia, and they want to keep the oil price put it, and so oil prices are, are very very low. But once everything gets back in and everything swings in motion, all of them all that oil is going to be used up. So they're going to have to go and get more oil. And so if you have stocks in oil now, you buy this. So when it's low, them things are going to end and it goes to thirty dollars. I mean, you made a what a, a twenty dollar profit per share that you own, and then on top of that, and this whole stocks is like a whole other conversation. Again, I'm not an expert. Like I, I try to pick stocks mm -hmm. that will pay me a dividend, and basically what dividends, basically what dividends are, is if you own a uh, you shareholder, like you own parts of that business. So like you know, you may own one stock of a company, say that stock costs fifty dollars. That company may pay you seventy five. Uh, cent per year for that one stock, and they break it over four quarters. You get what I'm saying? Over the four quarters of a year, which is you know, <laughs> different companies, you know what I'm saying? They will, you know, at different quarters, they will send you like money, they will pay you back. You may say, Well, I got $20 this month, next month, I got $15. You may say, Well, that ain't no money, but that's money you're not doing nothing, you're just making it. And you can look up research some of these people, these, some people are making thousands because they own shares in a the company just simply because of that. 
And that's something that I never knew. And my, I wish I'd have known this when I was in my teens. I would, I would have been done this stuff. You get what I'm saying? Like, just all this stuff that we don't know, man. And, like, I'm literally just uh, can I this stuff, like, right now. Like, literally. I, 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 been, I haven't been investing that long, but we, we give investment training. So I give you guys this. Look into ETFs. A, a, a lot of these things, like you can invest in an ETF that invests in a particular ser- sector, like a precious metals. So that, that ETF will cover gold, platinum, it about a little bit of that. You can get the ETF for the SP of 500. So you own a little bit of all the 500 companies. And I would tell you, I got a lot of ETFs, and you can get them aggressive or moderate or whatever level you want. And I tell you, the individual stocks that I do purchase, I think I opened up my wallet, all my cards had the Visa logo. I bought some Visa. I bought some Nike. I, I buy individual stocks of real things that I personally, I buy some Freds. So, you know, places I regularly go, I got those individuals, but I use a lot of ETFs. Like I got one that invests in uh, gold, but it's like mining gold. It's managers that are manage those accounts. But that's a way to get your money in one time and it cover a whole lot of ground. Cause like that 500, if one company drop, not all of them drop. So you kind of hedge your bet. But, and, and one more thing, we got to look at investing when we start uh, our, uh, but our age. If a person was finna retire and they were still in the market and wasn't in bonds, see, that's knowledge. You got to know when to get out. So you wouldn't have been there when it crashed. If you're relatively young, you can be set on aggressive for the next 10 years, 15 years. Man, where will y'all be? Where will your kids be? You done hired them all the time. Where would we be? Man, this is a great platform. I'm sorry. I love it. Hey, um, y'all, uh, we have a question. Um, so um, we're going to try to answer um, a Tamisha. Uh, when she said she just opened a Roth IRA, an individual brokerage account with Fidelity, but she don't know what to do with it as far as buying stocks. Mm-hmm. I say my, I would tell you, um, my first, the advice I would tell you is you're going to have to look into the stocks yourself. As far as um, anything, when you're going to buy stocks, you want to invest in the, you want to research the stocks yourself. And I gave a couple, like, you know, any, um, mm-hmm. Anything dealing with the airline company, by airline stocks, if they are low, you want to try to get in. Um, also, you know, uh, hotels, you want to try to get anything dealing with the <coughs> cruise ships and also um, pharmaceutical companies. So, <clears throat> them are some of the stuff I would tell you, the stocks that I would tell you looking into, um, to actually look into um, as far as what to invest. But let me make this disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm only saying what I but I will look into things that you feel like that you know that it's, as necess- it's necessary. It's something that we have a need for in America and it's at a low price compared to what it usually is and you feel as though that eventually the price is gonna go back up. That's what I will tell you. Any of y'all wanna help? Yeah, I, I, would, I would add on, um, like, I'll go back to what the elder said about the ETF, which is, uh, let me know if I'm wrong, elder, off the top of the dome, it's like an exchange traded fund. And basically what it does is takes all these companies and like it just spreads your money out over all these, there's like 50 or 60 companies and it, you know, it kind of balances itself out. So like you can look at companies um, like Vanguard, you know, like total start market, which is the ETF. And I think the ticker symbol is like VIT. And basically I'm not sure what, I'm not sure how much these shares call it a day. Um, you can just, you know, put in there because it, 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 it's not just one particular stock. It's so many of them. You get what I'm saying? And, so, and they, and if I'm not mistaken, they, they give you dividends, you know? And so you could, you know, look up just, um, some of the, you know, go at home, sit down at home and, you know, do research. Go to each one of them individually and track their history. You get what I'm saying? Seeing how much, you know, how, you know, what, what, uh, you know, what, what is their percentage over the span of the last 15 or 20 years in terms of their growth, whatever it is, what is their average, you know, sit down and, you know, go, go do all this and like SPHD. Um, I mean, yeah, there, there's, I mean, this, this whole stock thing is like a whole other, it's a whole other conversation. And then outside of the ETFs, as like my brother Stuart was saying, you, you might just invest into individual stocks, which are, which are a little bit more riskier than ETFs. It's more than one company. And if you just invest in Delta in and of itself, Delta would be more risky because you just invested into that one company as opposed to investing into, investing into a whole bunch of them. Your money would be more safer in the ETF. That's safer. You get what I'm saying? Going with a single, single stock, as Brother Stewart was saying. So like if you, I'm not sure how much Delta is, is, is going for right now, but if you just open up, you know, like a Roth IRA and uh, I don't know, how much is Delta going for? I don't know, say it's going for $50 and it go back up and you may, it's like $80 per share. You make $30 per share off of each one that you own. And they may give you a dividend for that. You know what I'm saying? Reading like a maniac for the last two or three months. I am a baby. And I might, the elder might be the add-on or somebody else might be the you, add-on. You, you do. YouTube videos, tons of books. You know, the stuff that you can kind of go read. The best thing you can do is, I'm telling you, is read, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer if someone who read because they are aware. 
they know. They know. You get what I'm saying? They know. So yeah, that would be my advice. But somebody feel free. Can to I go in. on that route? All right. I want to give how white folks look at stuff. That you got to look at it too. They put money into that so they won't be taxed on money. A lot of these stuff, you know, we got to get to the point where we maxing out our contribution. Them is tax savings. It comes down to the taxes, y'all. It always boils down to the taxes. That, that's it. I guess I would add, and you know, the time like you were said, just read any study and empathy online. I'm going to go to the most part of it. I'm not going to quite as much as I can. I think everyone really, but um, it tells you that the wealth is really spread out there in decades. So it's kind of the ETFs, the wrong the annuities, just spreading out. They say a portfolio is aggressive and it is wide. So even with um, the multi level home that you talked about, um, Elder, that, you know, investing in land, it tells you that they have eight invest in various investments, um, capital, land, um, bonds, and stocks, and everything that we're really talking about. Um, but I would say two things that I've, I've studied recently, and I know that I'm going to be by the end of the month or the first of May, I will pinpoint exactly how I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do this. Um, two things is going to be huge very soon down the line, from years down. And that will be, um, Computer, a uh, uh, computerized driver. They already have drivers of truck drivers with no driver that are taking routes on the West Coast. And so soon, um, so you can invest in that. Um, it's going to be huge. It's almost kind of what they talked about with um, Amazon and Microsoft, you know, decades ago, that certain things wouldn't be prevalent anymore um, as time goes on. So that's kind of research a little bit about um, computer drivers and truck drivers. That really not a person. And the other thing is the um trying to like the micro chipping. That's gonna be, you know, eventually um it would not, it's not gonna be a card. It's not gonna be cash, definitely not cash. That's gonna be a credit card. It won't be a card. It's gonna be something else. And that's what they, we know that's what they're trying to do across this world. It could be some kind of micro chip where it has all the information. So I'll be looking into that. I just, you know, want to spread it with you in case you want to research and invest in it. It's gonna have it's kind of like short chip with pharmaceutical. I don't agree with I'm not taking that down to take me down for that, but it is a good investment because many people are gonna listen to the government and you know they're they're saying and that is their choice. So we know that's the piece. But I wanted to share those two things that I hadn't really heard um in a forefront yet, but I did um research and the information was provided to me and um it makes sense. Yeah. Could, could I could I add real quick for the young brother that does the research? N NVIDIA and ADM. Check out those two companies. They make the chips that run all this AI technology. I invested in those two uh, over a year ago, and they really blew up the counter. I got those individuals. I was looking at that technology like the sister is talking about. But NVIDIA and ADM. I, I feel like y'all on my team, so I don't mind giving you guys what I've learned over the past four years. I've been doing this, so I, I'm really humble. I'm really I'm sorry. Y'all got so much potential. I believe it's like NVDIA, but you are in NVIDIA, you know, auto spell, it'll correct it. You'll see stock ticker, you know, everything gonna pop up on Google. But those companies, those two, they are the big chip makers that they need to run this machinery. And they've had some, uh, uh, I, I bought one. So I'm just giving y'all some uh, some stuff that I actually have. Thank you, thank you, because that's what I'm talking about. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, and you know, the, the veggie back on the elder, um, you know, that's why I put that my econ link in there. We need some more my econ associates, believe it or not, because with all this, it's all intertwined. I want to tell y'all another the blockchain. You know, a lot of people talk about digital currency, but it's the blockchain that's with the digital currency that's where the money gonna come at. Um, and I was trying to find some of these stocks, but I can't find them right now. Um, because my stash account is messed up. They blocked me on stash, so I can't um buy no no stock so stash right now. I don't know. I just it's something good with my digital currency. And that um, you know, it's a lot of information out here. And get it back. It's a lot of information out here. And I'm just glad that we are all able to help one another, man, and you know, put this stuff into use. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get me some video myself. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. I I hope we answer your question, sister. I hope um Commissioner that you got the answers to the question that you had. Um, you know, Nev, you want to say anything? You've been mighty um, quiet, brother. Oh, yeah, man. I'm definitely, baby, come to this stuff. Um, Y'all talking some good stuff. I'm definitely looking to it. Um, 
Like I said, when you know, hey, ain't nothing to say, man. <laughs> Sit back and listen and learn, you know? So I'm taking the back seat, let's listen and learn. And this definitely helped out, you know, help out the black community. The power of the black community as far as, you know, economic stuff, man, as far as the sale of family. So I'm just listening and learning, man. Y'all are my brothers and sisters. I don't know, I don't know what y'all talking about. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Y'all want to add on? Um, I think we've been up here, y'all. I think we had a good show. Um, and I'm gonna give everybody the opportunity to have a closing remark. Um, if y'all, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so be quiet. You sleeping? Um, I'm gonna give y'all opportunity so y'all can start closing out. And um, if y'all want to do a part two to this, just let me know. Um, I think it'll be good if we do a part two to it to go a little bit more in depth and um, show a little bit more stuff. Because I did have some stuff I wanted to show, but I ch I chose not to. So, you know, I thank y'all again for coming, man. And y'all will get. Okay, this this is you. I'll, I'll um, go ahead and close close out um close out first. I, I, I there, there's a a quote from um Francis Bacon, and he said, "Money is a great servant, mm -hmm. but a but a bad master." And so uh, with that being said, you make sure that you are the Lord over money. Money is not the Lord over you. You get what I'm saying? Because if you want in terms of money, then money will become your master. And so what you want to make sure that money is subject to you, that money understands and obeys you. You become the master of it and not that it becomes a master of you. And the best way to do that is to sit down and, and, and take the time to write yourself in there where you want to see your grandkids and stuff. And write all them goals down. No matter how big they may be, write everything down. And then you go backtrack and figure out what you have to do to make them things happen. And it may not be pretty. You may have to, you know, do some things that you're not used to. Arrows, and you may have to be the person for your family to have to step out in front to make sure everyone else is okay. I wish somebody would have done these things for me, but you know, lo and behold, they're different. So I'm willing to do these things and make your kids and you know my grandkids and et cetera, et cetera, would be you know great in the future. And the last thing I would say is this: in terms of like wealth, again, I don't look at wealth in terms of like money because some people are 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 rich in terms. Of, and I've come to learn, man, that wealth is wealth is being is wealth is having an opportunity to do whatever you want to do with your time. To me, that's like wealth. You get what I'm saying? And so if you, you don't have to have a million dollars, you can make $10,000 a month and be wealthy. And because that's your, that you own. You say to make sure they straight, you're not under the subjugation of someone else. Um, and so those, those are my final points. I had a great conversation with y'all. I appreciate you all. I took lots of notes. I'll make sure I go and research and video and research um, sent. And then I know my, I know a lot about annuities, but you know, the sister Mona has such great stuff. I want to go back and read, read some more what I, what I thought I knew because she added some jewels. So again, you know, I'm, I'm a student. Man, I love that brother's energy. What's your name again, brother? Oh, I'm, I'm Master You, man. Master You. Master You, man. I love your energy. I, I, I want to follow that and uh, just give us stewards some props, man. I, I appreciate you inviting me on to this call. Uh, you have some spectacular friends. And, man, I just, uh, if we were in my econ, we could give this conversation a lot of structure, you know, and talk about different things individually and, 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 and give it a lot of structure. So if he sent you some information, man, I hope you take that serious. And I just want to say this has been a great evening for me. And, man, I'm, I'm ready to get with you guys again. You guys are ready. I'm telling you. That'll be it. I really enjoyed myself. Uh, listen to everybody. And um, I'm definitely going to be around for part two. I'm definitely going to be studying about this. And it's getting involved with um, investment stuff. So is this the way to go? You know? Um, and that's all I gotta say. Peace, everybody. I enjoyed each and every one of you, Stuart. Thank you for the platform. Um, it's so wonderful to be able to help, you know, to conduct for other conversations of persons around the world. But the conversation with others about um, like minded is interested, is incredible. I love it. Thanks for the invite. Um, what else do we talk about? But um, I might switch my team, so check your um, message as well. Peace and light. I like to say peace and love. Doing the rest. All right, have everybody had the chance to close out? Um, the body still, here, brother. Okay. Um, I guess the brother may have stepped out or not, but um, you know, again, I want to thank y'all all for coming up here tonight. Um, you know, I want to thank y'all for lending us, me, and the people, y'all knowledge. You know, 
because like my brother Nabata always say, we all got pieces of the puzzle and we just try to put this puzzle together. And at the end of the day, financial literacy is something that has been missing in the black community. It has been missing and we need to do all everything in our power to restore the financial literacy rate of our people so we can understand our money, the power of money and what to do with our money. And, you know, I'm not going to say too much. I just thank you all. And, you know, we have to, we have to change the time. Like we have to end the generational curse. If you believe in the curse, like we have to end this cycle of us not understanding credit and, you know, waiting until we in our early forties to get, um, I guess, credit savvy, you know, just imagine like master, you said, if we would have had this information 20 years ago, how far we could be ahead today. And for a lot of us that may watch the playback, I've been where you was at. I've been where you was at, where you hear information, it sound good, but you don't act on it. You know, cause sometimes you have to plant the seed and sometimes you gotta wait. The seed may not sprout as fast as you want it to because you may not be watering it. So you may not be reading, you may not be researching, you know, you may not be giving it the sunlight so you may you build your credit you know you 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 may not want to read rich dad and poor dad you may not want to read that book you know but just like that seed need water and it needs sunlight to sprout the same thing with this information that we are given you have to put forth effort you have to look for this information it ain't gonna find you because it's hidden for a reason we behind for a reason we behind for a reason because they're not putting this information in front of us you know and i'm a i'm, I'm you know and i just i just want to thank y'all for watching man and um, I, you know, thumb up the video. Y'all go to Instagram. Y'all go to NCLBGZ Productions on YouTube and, you know, subscribe to the page. And we're going to be doing this more often. And with that, um, I just want to say peace and black. Peace, peace. What I do? Peace. Peace. Peace and love.